Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the situation. Okay, so we have an SA-2 right down here, southeast of Haiphong. Of course, it, SA-2 is ringing Haiphong, so that's not a place that I want to go. So it looks like our best avenue, and this is uh, pretty much the plan as I uh, as I went over it during the uh, intro, would be to just sort of push up through here with the uh, main complication being this SA-2 side. So really just sort of skirting around as much as we can, these SA-2s not directly over flying, if we can help it. And as the rest of my strike package gets airborne, let me come in here to the Hanoi area and start to uh, build these missions. And we see this SA-2 starting to launch against these. Let me see, these will be more F-105s uh, going in on another run against Hanoi. Now our targets are going to be two bridges, Paul Dahmer and Calvin 2. So let's go ahead and create Control F11. I'll call this one the just PD strike. This will be a strike, land strike. And I'm just going to leave this empty for now and come back and tweak that as we go. I'll select the Calvin 2 bridge, Control F11. We'll just call this CVT strike. Again, strike, land strike. I'm just going to leave that until I get back to it and start to tweak it. And then I come up here to the Yen Vien Rail Yard, Control F11, YV Rail, strike, strike, land strike. And I'll leave that empty until I come back and tweak it as well as the Air Force has, yeah, they've uh, really begun to pull out. So we have, yeah, our aircraft are starting to get airborne and starting to marshal. Here's another four ship of F-4s coming up here to get on station. Let me go ahead and assign them to the MIG cap. Just have them come straight up here and hold. And then I'll just extend this area out once I'm ready for them to push in. And yeah, I'll just sort of let things progress from here. Now, let's start to think about the suppression of enemy air defenses. Now, I want to focus as much as I can on defenses around Hanoi. You know, I can go low level and avoid a lot of these SA-2s once I get over the coast. It's the Hanoi area that I really want to focus on. So let me just create four points around Hanoi. That'll be the area where the seed flights look, and then two more points to act as sort of a, like a default holding location. Now let me select all these points. Go Control F11. I'll just call this seed. And this will be a patrol. Seed patrol. And yes, I know it's, uh, I know it's a weird shape, but I'm going to fix that. So investigate contacts outside the patrol area. Yes. And let me add all the current points except for 89 and 90 so that's the prosecution area then the patrol area is just 89 and 90 and there we go patrol right there and then prosecute anything within this window which for now is two two SA2s and a AAA emplacement with one of these SA2s it looks like has taken some damage yeah, the Illuminator was last seen about 20 minutes ago, so uh, chances are, I, I know that the Air Force had some seed aircraft going in there, chances are they took the Illuminator down, because yeah, we have the search radar up, Illuminator hasn't been uh, seen in a while, yeah, that, that uh, SA-2 is definitely not going to be a factor, I'm actually going to filter that one out. Yeah, for now, I think that'll work if I want to extend the seed. Actually, let me go ahead and do that. Let me just extend it out to cover this SA-2 side. And I'll move the reference points up here. Yeah, right. Yeah, there's really not going to be a good place for these guys to hold where they're not dodging SA-2s, but I think that'll work. That's about as good a setup as I'm going to get. And from here... It's just waiting for these aircraft to get airborne and get marshaled 
and push them in. So what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of time to do some more organization work. I'm going to go through and rename some of these groups just so that I can easily identify them once I do select them. For example, this is 4F4s. So I'm just going to go right shift R and just call this 4 by F4B. I don't know why it doesn't name these something more reasonable by default, but I'm going to take the time to do that. So I'll speed things up here and just sort of leave it running in the background. Okay, so for now I'm caught up on my renaming. It looks like these MiGs are starting to really chase the Air Force out of the area. So we've just got some F4Cs and a single F-105. Boy, yeah, they did get really torn up on their run, but they did give us a pretty good idea of what the air cover situation looks like. You've got a single J-6 farmer up here around Haiphong, and yeah, once I get marshaled, I'll start to think about taking care of all of this stuff. So let me do a little bit of cleanup work on these missions. It's easy to sort of lose track of where you are and forget some little basics that you have to worry about, especially when you're doing real-time commentary. Let me just go through and go to my Marshall mission. Now this is something new with Command version 1.11. I have a lot of options when it comes to how aircraft handle aerial refueling. So what I'm looking for here is receivers start looking for a tanker when down to a certain percentage of mission fuel. For my Marshall, I don't want these guys to hit the tanker unless I tell them to. So I'm going to have this set to none. And I can also come up here to, let me see, it's under mission doctrine. I have the ability to, yeah, there we go. Fuel state RTB, uh, never RTB, no matter what your fuel state, I'll manage that myself. And then weapon state RTB, this will be another one where no, do not RTB when you're on this Marshall mission, I'll take care of that myself. Yeah, the rest of it, it's just a generic mission so I can leave all of this stuff as is. Now I need to make these same sort of tweaks to my Strikes my mid cap. Let me do the mid cap first since these guys are already airborne. Let me just make sure, yeah, like right here, receivers start to look for a tinker when down to 60% of mission fuel. Uh, no, I don't want these guys to do any of that, so I'm going to set that to zero so that they only look for a tanker when they're at bingo fuel and don't try to get ahead of the game because the last thing I want is for these guys to just on their own start to RTB, which before uh, 1.11 and all these changes came out was the biggest headache with this particular scenario that's why I've never really I've never actually finished this scenario for that reason okay so weapon state RTB let me see use loadout setting or actually okay RTB when the last aircraft in the flight reaches the setting and then inherited for the weapon state at which they disengage I'm going to have this one set to Winchester uh, only disengage with miss mission specific weapons in other words the aim sevens and the aim nines are expended and then I'm only going to have them RTB when they hit bingo fuel. That's exactly how I want it. Ignore plot of course when attacking. I never ever under any circumstances want a flight not to follow the course I set for them. That's just the way that I play it. So I'm going to try to keep ahead of the game and always set that to no. And I know I'm going to get frustrated because I always miss one and they start to do other stuff. But that's how I play it. Automatic evasion. I definitely want to set to yes. Weapons release authorization. I'll just leave this as is and not not micromanage that uh, for this scenario when it comes to when, how many, and how far out they start to take shots. And I'm going to do the same thing for the strikes. So let me pause here so I can sort of take my time. I'll continue to let things play out as I'm in the background here tweaking the missions. And yeah, we're almost at the point where everybody is formed up and we can start to push the package in. So we'll be right back. Now I'll come back here since I'm setting up the seed mission. There's an additional new feature here. It's transit altitude and station altitude. So for my seed, I'm just going to have them by default be at 12,000 feet and then transit altitude. Now each aircraft, depending on the loadout, is going to have a certain flight profile that it flies. And for a seed flight, typically they just ingress the area at 36,000 feet and 
well, stay there. That's not necessarily what I want because of these SA-2s. So I'm going to set the transit altitude to 200 feet to try to give them some terrain masking. And then once they get on station right up here and start to take out targets, then they'll pop up to 12,000 feet and just the AI sort of takes over from there and they do their own thing. And I'll try to manage that as best I can. I really worry about this SA-2 side right here. Uh, that one that might be a problem. And actually, now that I'm looking at the map again, I have some MiGs coming coming down against this aircraft. Let me pull this ECM aircraft back. Why are you guys not engaging? Let me pause and figure this out. Okay, there we go. They <laughs> engaged now that... Yeah, now that this group is within this box, it just took them a couple of seconds. Okay, I'll run this again in real time, and we're going to see our first engagement against this group of MiG-17s. And two MiG-17s, it looks like, against eight F-4s with sparrows. They Our F-4s should make short work of this. Okay, so I'll just leave this and let this play out as I continue to configure the last of the strike package missions right here. Okay, missile launch off an F-4. Let's zoom in here and see how this does. It looks like these other MiGs are turning into the area. Let me go ahead and commit some more of these F-4s that were on the Marshall. So let's go ahead and assign this four ship to the MiG cap. And I've got a, let me see, Skunk 537. Okay, that's just a, that's just a boat contact, no big deal. And it looks like we have, yeah, like I said, a lot more MiGs. Let me ID these guys. J6s and other unknowns. Okay, there's a kill on a two MiG-17s. And let me extend this out and go ahead and have this MiG cap push. It's time for them to start pushing in anyway. So these eight F4s are going to turn to engage and get an ID. Now I'm going to play this sort of in the Vietnam style when it comes to uh, whether these guys engage or not right now they're set to only engage something that's been positively ID'd as hostile now you see these are identified as yellow so they're not confirmed hostile so our guys are not going to take these beyond visual range shots until they do identify them so that's sort of some historical realism even though looking at this from the common sense perspective yeah, I, sh I could just manually mark these guys as hostile and have a much, much better chance of an easy kill on these. So these are still AIM-7 Sparrow shots, semi-active radar-guided missiles. Not the best missiles in the world, so our average probability of hit on these when everything is said and done is anywhere from about 30 to 40 percent. Just when all the factors that are taken into account are computed. So yeah, not the, not the best missiles in the world. But okay, that's developing and I'm going to go ahead and extend the MiG cap further inland. Okay, there's our first F-4 taken out. That was taken out by a 30mm guns burst off of, yeah, probably a MiG, uh, a J-6, yeah, MiG-19 farmer. So I could have micromanaged that a little bit to make sure these guys did not get in within guns range, but yeah, that's a little bit too much micromanagement for a day. So you can see the entire strike package is marshaled. I had thought, I think I even mentioned earlier that I was going to have the A-4s possibly tank uh, prior to pushing in. I think they'll be okay. They were the last aircraft to get airborne, so they should be pretty uh, pretty darn good right now on fuel. So I'm going to leave them as is. I am, however, going to pick my A7 flights that were designated for seed and go ahead and assign them to the seed mission. So these guys will be the first in. So they're just going to turn directly up here to their holding point. And let me see, we just took out another... Oh, we took out something just then. Yeah, a couple of a uh, couple more MiG-17s. Okay, so seed flight, first flight is pushing in. Here's the second flight. It was just a force, another four ship of 
A7s with AG-45 Shrek, so I'm just going to assign them as well to the seed mission. And I'm also going to find my other F4s, so I'll have the, all of the F4s committed to the MIG cap as well and push them in first. Okay, there's another F4 down. That was AA-1 Alkali. That was a MiG-17 with a, a missile hit. What was the final probability on that? Okay, final probability was 30% and they got the and they got the hit. So let me see, MiG-17, am I? Let me see. Okay, there we go. I stand corrected. I thought the AA-1 was a heat seeker for some reason, but yeah, you can see it's just a old, old, solid fuel, short range, air-to-air -air missile. Beam Rider, so 13 kilogram warhead, semi-active radar homing missile with a 10 nautical mile range, so less capable by far than the uh, AIM-7 Sparrow, so it has a base probability of hit in the database of 45%, and yeah, sure enough, they just maneuvered into a good position and took out another F-4. Okay, so let's go ahead and resume. Now you can see the two seed aircraft, though it didn't do them good for much longer than that and that immediately after they got the kill we took out the last of those mig 17s so right now surprisingly amazingly the air picture is clear okay so i'm going to restrict the engagement envelope actually i'm going to not restrict but rather to expand it so that it extends out over hanoi and i'm going to move the default holding location for the F-4s up here to the coast. So they're going to turn up here and be just sitting there waiting to push in once more air threats start to develop. Okay, so we have the seed aircraft pushing. Now let me slow things down here. Now let me go ahead and actually pause for this point because this is going to be the really, really important part because what I'm going to do now is assign these aircraft to their respective missions and then do some tweaking to the path that they take. So let's go ahead and start with these guys, A6s. I'm going to assign these guys to the Calvin 2 bridge, and you can see that it creates a path. Now, let me come down here and start to manipulate the waypoints. Okay, so like I was saying before, I want to come in here, and just sort of try to skirt as many of these SA2s as I can, and then well, depending on the way that the air thread looks, or the surface air thread looks, then pull them out. I think ideally I wanted to just sort of have them come around in this direction to pull out, but yeah, we'll have to play that in real time because I don't think a lot of these surface air missile sites were taken out by the Air Force Strike Package. So, okay, they're going to go in feet dry right there. I'm going to move the IP. Well, that's about as good a spot as I'm going to get for the IP. And let me see, I'll just have them come off to the, I think my best bet with known AAA and just uh, Hanoi proper down here, sort of to the left, the city of Hanoi and the uh, Bak Mai and Gialam up here. I think it's, yeah, Gialam right there uh, near Hanoi as well. I think my best bet for an egress would be to turn right, not overfly the airfields, and then egress the same direction that the ingress in, and I can always take over and tweak this manually as we go. So I think that's the overall plan when it comes to getting these guys in and out. So let's move on to A4Cs. Let's get these guys pushing in. I want these guys on the rail. So Yin Bien rail strike, and I'm just going to have them basically take the same path. I will tweak their IP. I don't really need to, I guess. That's a good path for the IP. That takes them around this ASA 2 site. And then egress, yeah, I can't ask for anything better there, just egress in the same way that they came in. I can tweak this a little bit so that they're not so close to this SA-2 right here in the middle. And I'll tell you what, let me, let me really take my time here. I'll skip ahead to the point, I'm just going to do the same thing for all the rest of them. I'll skip ahead and then back briefly on what my overall plan is here.